filters for the regulations that comes with cost. Right. But so like lab margins, just talk about it a little, you know. So um, lab laboratories. Um, so so everybody thinks that if you own a lab, you make a ton of money. No. So so you know. If you think about how a lab has to run, right, um, and think about what our, our primary product out, people think is a COA, but it's not, right? It's customer satisfaction, right? So, so we, like every other business, have to, our product is happy customers, right? So um, in order to make a happy customer, you have to be able to meet a reasonable turnaround time, right? In order to meet a reasonable turnaround time, that means you have to build your lab in a way that you have capacity, you know, uh, uh, unused capacity, because the moment you max out your capacity and something breaks, your customers are now unhappy because they're not getting turnaround time, right? So, so this is a vicious cycle that we go through. So if you think about it from those terms and, and what the margin on your unused capacity has to be to be able to be able to meet that, right? So now you're looking at to start up a lab, you need at least two of everything, and two of everything gets you about 50 samples a day, right? So that's not a lot of money, right? right? So, but, you know, with, with 50 samples a day and two of everything, you can keep that many customers happy, however many customers give you 50 samples, right? Whether it's one large company or a bunch of small companies, right? So if you would like to get larger than that, oh, and here's the important part, two of everything, will set you back somewhere between, depending on whether you go with high end or low end equipment, a million and a half to two and a half million dollars, right? That's just the entry fee to play the game, right? That doesn't include building, that doesn't include all the other lab equipment that needs to be able to help run the lab, like the pipetters, doesn't include your salaries or anything like that, right? Just the lab to, salaries are pretty substantial. Sure, yeah, I mean, you know, you don't want unskilled labor running your machines that cost Eight hundred thousand dollars, right? right? That's probably a bad idea, right? right. <laughs> so, right. Um, you know, so so, you know, so that that's just to get started, right? So now, if you would like to scale and 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 try to be a a larger player in the industry, now you're looking at having to have, well, let's use Steep Hill for example, our Berkeley lab, right? So I have um, one, two, three, four. four Five, five G, uh, LCs, another liquid, uh, uh, liquid chromatographs. So I have another four or five liquid chromatograph with mass spec, right? So, you know, to be able to do pesticides. I have seven GCLM, uh, GCMSs to be able to do residual solvents, some pesticides, you know. So, you know, for heavy metals, what do you uh, ICPMS, you need a few of those, right? Because you need at least two, right? Because I said you need two, at least two of everything, right? So. So, you know, so now, you know, that's, you're looking at just, and then that's, that's just the chemistry. That has nothing to do with microbial stuff and all the incubators and all the stuff for that, you know. Um, you know, and, and then, oh, wait, we forgot water activity. We t forgot microscopes and cameras for visual inspection. And then you have to have a quality assurance manual. You have to have training programs. You have to have, so now. And don't you have to go out to every cultivation spot and pick up the cell? Ah, all yeah. So now you have to have people who have, who have been trained and are certified in sampling. And it can't be just any sampling. You have to have a statistical sampling plan, right? It has to be, you know, right? so, so, you know, then you have to have a vehicle, right? Because by or law, yeah. or six, right? Yeah. Or because by, by law, right, you can't lease a vehicle or rent a vehicle. Right, you have to own the vehicle, right? So that's the BCC regulation. So, so now, oh wait, storage. We forgot storage, right? We tried to get storage cut down to a couple of weeks. It's forty-five freaking business days. You so, have to hold on to Sam. yeah. So now I have to devote part of my lab to a locked storage facility, right? So these, and because none of these things were actually considered before the regulations went into play. And, and as all of these things kept piling up, they kept jumping it like at the same spot, the labs, right? So, and, and I'm not saying that it was done maliciously, right? But it kind of was the, the, oh, well, that's, yeah, that's a good spot. They have it for testing, let's let them keep it there. At one point, um, they, they wanted the batches to actually be held in a facility at the laboratories. And we were like, whoa, whoa, whoa dude, we don't even want to keep the excess, right? So we should sample twice, take the one sample with us and leave the other sample locked in quarantine at the producers because they have, it's, you know, I mean, 
And then uh, we saw what happened in Washington State with the lab where they were caught smoking. Yeah, they lost their license or it was like under jeopardy. I mean, those things could easily, it was a lab, it was a testing lab in Washington. And rather than throw the stuff away, they were caught, you know, smoking it. And actually it was a lab chain that was in, in California, loosey goosey, right. playing with the rules. Right. So well, not all labs are, you know. Well, so, um, if the state of California thinks that wasn't happening in California, um, they were sadly deluded because there's no way to, so our track and trace system, right? Our track and trace system is still only marginally functional, I believe. I mean, I believe it is functioning, but I believe that the majority of people are still not on it. Um, and without track and trace, you can't track and trace. So. <laughs> So, you know, I mean, so... Um, That's right, they're blind. Yeah, so, you know, can they audit after the fact? Yeah, so what we, you know, so... But now here, here's the other problem. So there's this whole other level of stuff that nobody considered. Hey, how do we get rid of all this cannabis waste from the laboratory? Okay, let's call it local, the local trash pickup. It's what? Oh, hell no, we don't take that. Uh, keep going. Has... It's being treated as hazardous waste and some of the most expensive, right? So, and we have to pay for, for tonnage that's not cannabis. Before they'll take it, it has to be mixed with water or kitty litter. And so we have to, and we have to pay the combined weight, not just the weight of the cannabis, the weight of the water and the kitty litter. Wow, that's a real unintended consequence <laughs> yeah. right there. Yeah. So are you seeing unintended consequences all over the place? Um, yes, we are, so. Yeah.